Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. Uh, currently with just the exploration and none of the space. But I have had a bit of progress since the last episode. So as you may remember, I had, I've had, was working on my outposts in that one. Uh, I've got a coal mine over here, which is admittedly still linked up by a belt, because it was fed relatively close by. And then another one up here, which is um, linked by train, because it's a bit further away. This, so this one has coal, this one has oil. Um, I kept running out of power up here because there wasn't enough, um, the coal kept running out and not powering the, uh, the burner generator over here. So in order to get around that, I put in a, a fuel refinery here, which is pulling uh, petroleum from here and turning it into solid fuel, which is then powering the, uh, the power for around here. And that means that I'm now not running out of coal all the time, which is rather nice. There's a decent amount of it in these chests which can then be fed along here to be turned into plastic. So the plastic should start working a bit better. The downside of all this is that I'm rather low on um, petroleum gas. I've got oodles of oil but not enough gas so I need to put some more of these refineries in. And I was going to do that, um, except my playtime recently has been rather full of... Um, let's just say it's been full of distractions. So we had an attack over here which um, took out as you can see, they managed, they managed to get through. They took out one of, uh, one of my turrets and damaged some um, inserters and things down here. I've now sorted that out, so that's now okay. We've got a lot more guns in here now, so that should be more than capable of, capable of protecting this area. I also had an attack down here somewhere on the top of my bus. And that was, oh yeah, it was here. And this was really frustrating, partly because I was bloody miles away and it took me forever to get down there and kill the, the one biter that had got in. And also because the biter ate through my um, iron chest here and destroyed all of the train track inside it. So that was a massive waste of resources. However, I've built that back up again, and in order to stop it happening again, I've extended my wall here, uh, it got to about here, I've extended it all the way over to here to the sea. Uh, and that was that was reasonably um, reasonably straightforward. There's a couple of points where it's passing cliff faces, so it, it, there's some underground belts in there, and a little bit, of, and a couple of gaps in the wall because it's blocked up by cliffs. But basically that's absolutely fine, it's, it, it, it's working. Uh oh, meteorite, where's that going? Oh, it's up there, it's alright. Uh, so, that was the, those were my first couple of distractions. Um, I also did, my, before I got too distracted, I managed to get uh, Grey Science up and running here. So we've got, um, this is the right ratios, we've got um, the ammunition being produced as you can see. Uh, grenade, grenades seem to be the limiting factor at the moment. I, I thought the whole thing was balanced and I'd done the numbers. Um, and given that all of these are running but we're just out of grenades, I suspect I have got the numbers right. Um, but there's slightly, for some reason, there's slightly more ammo and slightly more wall than I actually need. I'm not too worried about that though, um, because as long as there's slightly more than I need of everything, then it's probably okay. So that's of course feeding down this belt, which wraps all the way around here and, and up here. And you tend not to use um, uh, what's it called military science quite as much as the rest of them, because a lot of the researches are well, okay. This is a military science one, but most of them tend to be. Um, just just other science packs so the military tends to get used at a much lower rate as you can see down here there's a few military ones up to here but then all all of these are just red and green and if we look at the ones that I can't do yet there's lots and lots that are red green and blue and then a few that are red green blue and gray so the, yeah the the military science doesn't generally get used quite as quickly which is probably a good thing because I think I'm actually um, not building it as fast as I'm using it when this is running flat out but that's okay because most of the time it isn't so, the next thing I needed was um, red circuits, so I, was, I wasn't quite sure what to work on next, so as is usually the, uh, the best way in Factorio, if you don't know what to do next, look at the next science pack. So this one, I need advanced circuits, engine units and sulphur. So advanced circuits are relatively straightforward, they're just things I already have, um, plus plastic. And plastic was being made up here, um, in my oil refinery area, so I got the train here to start running. Um, as you can see, it's, it's gradually picking up, it's got up to 2.8 thousand so far. And then it can bring it down here, where we've got lots. <laughs> I don't know how many lots it is, but it is quite a lot. Uh, that that's, gets dumped on here, yada yada yada, round, round here, and we can make that into circuits. I do probably need to double this up again, just to have another sort of, the same sort of thing, but mirrored above it, he, he, in here, to make the circuits a bit faster, because I suspect once I start using them, this, this little thing here won't keep up. However, there is another slight problem I'm about to run into. And that's all this water over here. So my bus has been extending, running nicely across here, apart from, there's a bit of a glitch here where we, where we had to go around this, um, these cliff faces. But then now I'm about to run into the water. So what, I'm, what I was thinking of doing is turning the bus through 90 degrees so it starts to, about here, so it starts to go up. Or maybe I'll just squeeze around here and go up across this bit. I can't make cliff explosives yet. 
I probably can make landfill. Have I researched landfill? Yes, I have researched landfill. So I, so I could make landfill and punch across here. But that would be a lot of stone, and I don't think it's I don't think it's worth the effort at this point. So I think the best thing to do is to turn the bus bus in this sort of area and head up across here and hope that I can jump over these cliff faces reasonably well. And then head up here. And so then I'm going to need for the for the blue science packs, I'm going to st need to start making sulfur as well. So that's going to be another thing to run up here off this uh, petroleum gas feed and probably have another line break off across here so to, to pick up the sulfur. It's I think I am fairly soon going to want to redesign all of this because it's a bit rubbish. Uh, but it'll work for now and it'll it'll keep me going until I've sort of got to the point where I can just expand outwards much much more easily. Uh, so yes, I need to put in some more refineries. I need to put in a load more of these uh, chemical plants, both for making um, plastic and for making sulphur. Those are both manageable. And then think about blue circuitry. I also, um, when I was building this wall across here, I got to about about here probably, and then realised I'd run out of walls and there was nowhere. There was nowhere of actually building them. I then went, came down here to boost up my production of um, of, of stone bricks, and discovered that this mine here is starting to run out. Uh, so that was a bit of a worry. I've been through and I've pulled up a load of them. One of the nice things about some of the new graphics we've got in Factorio is you get these red lights or green lights or yellow lights. It's, it's like you've got the um, the uh, what do you call it uh, bottleneck mod built into the um, into the miners, so you can tell whether they're blocked on exit, mining away happily, or have run out of input. So this this miner, for example, I can pull up because it's not actually doing anything anymore, because it's got, which is why the red light has come on on it. So, I discovered conveniently there's a nice patch of stone down here. So I chucked in a load of miners on here. They're now making the stone bricks, which are being made into walls up here, which got 183,000. Uh, so 180, 183, not 183,000. And this is mostly limited by my um, inserters. So I think, yes, the other thing I need to do fairly soon is upgrade to the decent inserter types. And that might have been the other reason I was producing the red circuits. Let's have a look. Okay, so these need green circuits, which is which isn't too bad. I can manage that. These need red circuits, and I want to have stack inserters for loading and unloading trains, because otherwise, with the with the yellow inserters, you run into the problem where a train pulls into a station. You tell it to wait there for two minutes because that's the maximum amount of time you can have them sitting there if they're not um, if you're not going for completely full or completely empty. But it takes more than two minutes for a for a yellow inserter to completely load or unload a train. So I definitely want to get blue and green inserters up and running. That's uh, that's a fairly high priority. In fact, I think that's a higher priority than getting the uh, the next science packs up and running. Then, I, And that's why this is taking so long to build up any decent number of, um, of walls, because this inserter is so slow. I, actually, that said, I'd say that, yeah, the assembly machine is running maybe a quarter of the time. So with a faster inserter there, I can make the wall, literally make four times as many walls, now that brick, in, brick input isn't a problem. Coal is a bit of a, a worry, though. Um, I've got quite a lot of it being used to make the uh, the grenades for the for the grey science packs and that's it's not being where's where's coal coming from coal's coming from all the way around from here yes this coal mine is starting to uh, struggle a bit so that said i'm not sure why oh, okay yeah so most of the coal is going through to be turned into into the into, refined into fuel here which is limiting the amount that's able to come out around the top side here. So that's, yeah, that's putting a bit of a, um, a break on it. Um, that said, I mean, the other side of the belt is still completely full, so we're using coal at no more than 50% of the rate it's being produced. So, yeah, I think it, it, it's not ideal, but it is actually okay. Um, a, a, quite a lot of it, of course, is going into the... Um, where's my train station? Here it is. Oh, she no, it isn't. These these boxes are all full, um, so it's not actually being plundered by this. So, speaking of things that were running out, <laughs> the other thing I was having pro uh, supply problems with was copper, and that's because lots and lots of it's getting used for um, the red ammunition here. Lots of it's getting used for where else am I swallowing up huge amounts of it? Presumably, the red ammunition around here is that's no, not taking that much. Maybe it was earlier. Where is this, this going? Something is using it. Yeah, it, 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 it is the red ammunition here, I think, that's taking it at the moment. So all of that is taking quite a lot of copper. 
I have, however, put in an additional... Um, oh, that's, that's a fail there. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't get through the trees with that bit, so I could boost my copper production a bit. In fact, let's go over and do that. I remembered I'd built a car as well, so that makes getting around a little bit easier. So, yes, I've built in an extra, and some additional um, copper refining uh, down there. And the advantage of the way I've got it set up at the moment is it's all in the same place, um, except for this brick over stuff over here. So later on I'll be able to bring it in by train, and it's all then being fed out onto this belt on the bus. At some point I'm going to run into the problem where the um, where the a single yellow belt isn't fast enough to carry it all through, and I'm going to need to choose whether I want to um, upgrade to red belts or put an additional yellow belt in across there. Or, you know, I could even do both. I could go up to two red belts going across. But at the moment, the the two ones, the ones that tend to have tend to struggle are copper and iron. And both of those are are doing okay at the moment. There is enough going through, so I'm not I'm not too worried about it yet. Steel is it's struggling a little bit, but again, it's only pulling it off one side of the belt, so we're only running at 50. Okay, maybe a little bit more than 50% of capacity because this the other side is moving a bit as well. But again, it's not at 100% capacity because this this belt is backed up, or this heart side of the belt is backed up. So I don't need to worry about it just yet, but I probably will soon. Um, yeah, looking at the... Okay, there's, pl there's plenty of iron ore coming in, so that's not, a, that's not a worry. I think at some point fairly soon I'm going to try and upgrade to steel, uh, steel furnaces. Can I do that yet? Yes, I can. Okay, that's definitely something that's worth doing for, um, as, as an upgrade. Because that will boost the speed of all of the uh, production around here. So let's see. The c interesting... Okay, so the, the copper is all getting used up. Maybe I don't actually need to. These these might be long enough, uh, long enough strings of, of furnaces that they are capable of using a full belt of input, it, a full half belt of input. It's just because I'm not using it as fast as it's being produced. Okay, I don't need to. So maybe I don't need to worry about um, steel furnaces just yet. I think that covers everything I've done. So there's been an expansion of the wall across here. I built red circuit production here. And I've built an additional um, stone mine here. There aren't, there doesn't seem to be anything that's too much of a, a shortage yet. The iron, ooh, the iron here is struggling a little bit. I might need to go in and do some tidying up here. But further down, we've got enough iron and we've got enough steel coming through to keep the base running. So we do seem to be okay for the time being. And the defences do seem to be generally working as well. Apart from that one incursion I met, mentioned down here, and the one up. here here, here, here. Um, I don't seem to have been attacked for a while now, which is um, quite nice. And so, and, and I've, I've fixed both of those problems. So that they do see, these turrets do seem to be able to deal with the biters. So until the biters find an upgrade, I seem to be all right. Okay, that brings you up to date. Uh, for the next episode, as I said, I'm going to start working on faster inserters. Maybe have a think about blue science. Definitely get sulfur production up and running so that I can start blowing up cliffs. And um, yeah, so I stop and then put put my corner in on the bus. I hope you'll join me for that. Uh, it's it's going fairly well so far. I think I've I've, I've got over that sort of initial early game hump where you where everything's a bit frustrating because it's all slow and you're just trying to scrape together small amounts of resources. And now I feel I've got back into the flow of it. So I'm I'm enjoying it a bit more now. I was feeling a little burnt out, but I've yeah definitely got over that. So let's um let's keep going and hopefully I'll get to the um, the actual space part uh, with, with, in, in only a few more episodes. <laughs> I guess we'll see how it goes and you'll have to come back and see how it, uh, whether I can manage it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.